Heart rate variability is a biometric outcome that has become increasingly popular in recent years as a way to monitor stress and recovery. And there are loads of platforms and smartwatches that measure heart rate variability. But if you're using Apple Watch to measure your heart rate variability, can you actually trust the number it gives you? We ran a validation study to find out. Now, most of what's out there in terms of evaluating accuracy when it comes to Apple Watch and heart rate variability are consumer tech reviews and influencer reviews. The issue with these reviews are that they are basically very small experiments with the sample size of one person, the reviewer themselves. So what we wanted to do is evaluate the accuracy of Apple Watch across a diverse spectrum of participants. So we designed a prospective cohort study evaluating the accuracy of Apple Watch for measuring heart rate variability and compared it with a Polar H10 chest-worn heart rate monitor and the Kubios heart rate variability platform. Now, why did we pick Kubios and a Polar H10? Because generally speaking, these are considered to be the most accurate way to track heart rate variability outside of a lab environment. And the advantage of testing heart rate variability and validating it outside of a lab environment is that it means that it is closer to the real world application of heart rate variability testing and tracking. It's pretty rare that you'd have an athlete or a patient coming into a lab to assess their heart rate variability. The best time to assess heart rate variability is either overnight or first thing in the morning when you're at complete rest. So we recruited 39 healthy participants and had them complete serial measures of heart rate variability each morning. So these participants woke first thing in the morning and either sitting still or laying flat, they conducted a heart rate variability measure for five minutes. And our participants did this for between seven and 14 days. And this resulted in a data set of around 300 readings over the course of our 39 participants. So what did we find? So on average, the Apple Watch underestimated heart rate variability by about eight milliseconds, and the mean absolute percentage error was 29%. That's not a trivial value. In terms of resting heart rate, there was very little difference, about 0.08 beats per minute. So for heart rate, the Apple Watch was fine, but for heart rate variability, not so much. Just look at this Blonde Altman analysis, which shows you the spread of differences across the full range of HRV values. You can see how the limits of agreement were wide from about 54 to 37 milliseconds. So while the average difference might not sound massive, the variability between readings was actually substantial. So what does all of this mean? Well, if you're using Apple Watch to monitor HRV trends over time, if you're using it as a precise marker of stress or recovery, or trying to compare your numbers to clinical norms, I'd be cautious because its accuracy doesn't look to be particularly good. But here's where things get a little bit messier. Even if you are just tracking HRV trends over time, the way Apple measures heart rate variability is a little bit odd. You see, they use SDNN as the way to calculate HRV. And this is a little bit of a strange approach. SDNN has been used for 24 hour monitoring in clinical settings, but the more traditional method, the way Garmin, Aura, Fitbit, and a number of other consumer wearable tech companies calculate HRV is through RMSSD, or the root mean square of successive differences. Now, this is a big deal. The fact that Apple uses SDNN and everybody else uses RMSSD is one thing. But the other thing Apple does is that it calculates an average HRV over the course of a 24 hour period. Most, if not all of those other companies, they take HRV measures throughout the night when someone is asleep. Now I've gone into greater detail on this in my Science of HRV video, but HRV is incredibly sensitive to context. It fluctuates based on posture, activity, mood, caffeine, stress, and more. Apple's approach ignores all of that. By spreading measures throughout the entire day with no control for context, the data they produce might not just be noisy and inaccurate, it might be fundamentally misleading. You could argue it's the wrong way to measure HRV entirely. So yeah, if you're serious about tracking HRV and you actually want the number to reflect something meaningful, you're probably better off with a device that does it right. I'd recommend taking a morning measurement with a chest strap like the Polar H10 and using the Kubios software. It's free.